Unlike these oscillators that produce sine waves from oscillating voltages, a direct digital synthesizer pulls amplitude values for a sine wave from a lookup table and sends them to an analog to digital converter to be output as voltages. That brings us to the first exam question. What information is contained in the lookup table of a direct digital frequency synthesizer? A. The phase relationship between a reference oscillator and the output waveform. B. The amplitude values that represent a sine wave output. C. The phase relationship between a voltage controlled oscillator and the output waveform. Or D. The synthesizer frequency limits and frequency values stored in the radio memories. The correct answer is B. The amplitude values that represent a sine wave output. Here's a look at the whole system. Every time the clock signal changes, the phase accumulator, I know you think that's a moose, but deep in their hearts, all phase accumulators think of themselves as mooses. Anyway, the phase accumulator gets the next value from the lookup table and gives it to the analog to digital converter that then outputs that many volts. The output of the analog to digital converter is a little jaggy, so it's passed through a low pass filter, and voila, sine wave. Now that you've seen the whole system, you're ready for the next exam question. What type of frequency synthesizer circuit uses a phase accumulator, lookup table, digital to analog converter, and a low pass anti alias filter? A. A direct digital synthesizer. B. A hybrid synthesizer. C. A phase lock loop synthesizer. Or D. A diode switching matrix synthesizer. The correct answer is A. A direct digital synthesizer. Another exam question. Which of these circuits would be classified as a principal component of a direct digital synthesizer, or DDS? A, phase splitter, B, hex inverter, C, chroma demodulator, or D, phase accumulator. That's right, a phase accumulator, the moose. So, you ask, why is the output from the analog to digital converter jaggy? Great question. It has to do with the lookup table and the oscillating clock signal. The output from the analog to digital converter only changes when the clock signal changes. That accounts for the horizontal jags. The lookup table doesn't contain every amplitude for the sine wave. So, when the next value arrives at the analog to digital converter, it's noticeably different from the last one. That accounts for the vertical jags. These jags lead to unwanted noise in the form of discrete frequency spurs. And I bet you thought the moose didn't have anything to do with anything. Look at his antlers. Discrete spurs. <laughs> and that brings us to the last exam question on direct digital synthesizers. What are the major spectral impurity components of direct digital synthesizers? A. Broadband noise. B. Digital conversion noise. C, spurs at discrete frequencies, or D, Nyquist limit noise? The correct answer is C, spurs at discrete frequencies, just like the moose. And that's everything you need to know about direct digital synthesizers for the extra class exam. Every time the clock signal changes, a moose, a uh, phase accumulator, pulls a value from a lookup table that corresponds to a sine wave amplitude passes that to an analog to digital converter which has a jaggy output causing discrete frequency noise spurs so it's passed to a low pass filter to get rid of those and voila sine wave.